Today we're starting to look at engineering mechanics, which is one of the subtopics that comes up in um, all the topics that we do in engineering studies, both year 11 and year 12. Um, and so for our first lesson, we're actually going to be looking at something that we're going to spend a lot of time on over the course of the two years, but and use all the time, but force. So you might have learned about force already, but we'll do a quick recap. So yeah, a force. A force is any kind of push or pull um, that is usually acting on an object. So it might be me pushing a chair around or pulling on a rope, which is attached to a sled or something. Um, and um, anything that we do usually to an object is ex using a force. So just standing in the classroom, I'm standing here, I'm going to be um, the weight, my weight is going to be causing a force on the ground and the ground is going to be a, doing a reaction force back up to me, holding me in place. Um, anyway, a force is an example of uh, something that we call a vector. And, and so basically for physics and engineering, there's two types of magnitudes that we need to know about. So scalars and vectors. So let's, we'll just compare those for a little bit. So scalars and vectors. Um, and so a scalar is any kind of magnitude that we need to measure that just has a value or a magnitude only, and it doesn't have a direction. So they only have a magnitude. Some examples are things like time. So time, we can, we can measure time. It, it increases, and, but it doesn't actually have a direction. Um, length, when we just measure length, it's not necessarily a direction. And so we say that that's scalar. Speed, is also counted as scalar. Um, pressure and mass. Now there's other ones as well, um, but they're the main ones that we're going to think about. Um, some of these have very similar things that are actually vectors. So um, length there which we would measure in meters or millimeters or centimeters or whatever, has a very similar um, vector called displacement. It's much the same. Um, we still measure a distance. However, a displacement has to have a direction because vectors have both magnitudes and directions. Okay, so displacement will also be in meters or centimeters or millimeters. However, it's gonna have a direction. Speed, which is normally in meters per second, is the SI unit. Um, we have a very similar vector called velocity, which is like speed, but again, it has to have a direction. Um, weight is one that people often confuse with mass. So something might have a mass of 100 kilograms. Um, and that talks about how much material is there. However, as you know, um, things don't weigh the same everywhere. So if we say I weigh 100 kilograms here on Earth, because I have 100 kilograms of mass, if I was to go to the moon, where gravity is much less, my weight would actually be much less. And so weight is to do with a mass inside a gravitational field. So weight actually is a force in Newton's. Um, and then the last one we're gonna talk about is force, because it's the topic for today.
And so there's all different types of forces. Forces like weight, which are due to gravity, forces due to pushing or pulling, forces that are due to um, magnetic fields or uh, lots of things. Um, we're going to mostly focus on physical pushing and pulling. Um, yeah, yeah, and that time also has a, a unit of seconds. Um, so, like I say, um, force is an example of a vector. A vector meaning that it has to have a magnitude and a direction. Um, I'm going to expand on that. There's actually four things that a force has to have. Um, we usually use arrows to represent a force. So, like this. with like an arrowhead and a tail. And there's four things that need to be there. So a magnitude. And that is usually to do with the length of the arrow. So the longer the arrow, the larger the magnitude of the force. Um, because it's a vector, it needs to have a direction. And we usually show that as the angle that it makes of the horizontal. So in this example, my direction would be that angle there, theta. It has to have a sense, which is um, similar to direction, but it's, uh, it's the actual arrowhead. So which direction is positive? Is it, a, is it a push or is it a pull? Um, and so it's in the direction of the arrow. If we didn't have an arrowhead, that would just be a line. And you wouldn't know whether this force here was going down and to the left or up and to the right. Because we've given it an arrowhead, we know that it senses up and to the right. And lastly, it needs to have a point of application. And that is the point at which it's apply, being applied. So we might call this force A occurring at point A. Um, if there was more than one force occurring at point A, then we might need to move on to different um, systems. Uh, and so this arrow that I've drawn here is a force A. It's occurring at point A and it's pulling because it's the arrow the sense is pushing is away from the A. It's at the angle theta to the horizontal, and it has a magnitude of this length here, which we could also give a value. So that's maybe that's like 10 newtons or something. Because um, we don't always draw forces to scale, and so we often have to actually label them with numbers for the magnitude. And often we, we write in the, the direction. So let's say that's 30 degrees. Um, if we weren't drawing it with like a ruler and a compass. Anyway, um, so a few more things about forces. So there's a few things you need to know um, that make them useful to us. So firstly, forces can be split. into components and almost always they're going to be x and y so um, let's take another look at that force a so this is let's say this is a um, let's say that it's actually five newtons Well, we can draw a Cartesian plane there, putting it on an x and y axis. So this is our x axis, this is our y axis. Uh, the point of action there would be the origin, zero, zero. Um, 
Um, and we can actually break this into components. So the two components here, so if this is force A, would be the Y component, which is um, the Y value of the force, and the X component, which is the X value of the force. So we would call those components A, Y, and A, X. Our Y component of force A and our X component of force A. And so um, because it's a Cartesian plane, X and Y coordinates, it's, a, it's going to be a right angle triangle. And so if we, um, we're not too worried about what that angle would be, we could say that maybe our Y component is 3 and our X component is 4, and we would make a nice, perfect um, Pythagorean triangle there. So our AY would be 3 newtons, and our AX would be 4 newtons. Um, this means that we can actually um, find it easier to understand what a force is doing to an object and do calculations with them. Um, so normally we would actually, if we've got a force with a magnitude, let's go back to this one, 10, and an angle of 30 degrees. Then we could split it into an X and Y components. So let's call this force. No, we'll just keep with A. Well, we need to be good at our trigonometry here. So this will be our AY and our AX. Well, if we know trigonometry, if that's 30 degrees, then our AY is going to be opposite for our hypotenuse. So sine 30 is going to be equal to AY over 10. Or AY will be equal to 10 times sine 30. Um, in the same way, AX is going to be able to be found with cos 30. So cos 30 is going to be equal to AX over 10. And then AX is going to be equal to 10 times by cos 30. And that's how we can break that force up into its X and Y components. Um, I'm going to have to zoom in. This is one more thing I wanted to explain. Um, didn't leave enough room. That's all right. Uh, one more thing. So forces are able to be split into their components, but forces can also be added together. Um, and so if they're acting in the same direction, we call that collinear. So let's say that's force A acting to the right. We can add force B acting to the right. And we're going to get a force which is equal to both of those together, A plus B. And it's going to be as long as both those two forces combined. So, um, however, if they're not collinear, like this example here, we can still add them together. So let's have a look if they're not collinear. So let's say we've got force A, which is going up and to the right like this, plus B, which is just going to the right. We can still add those together, and we do something called a force triangle. So what we do is we, and it can actually be more than a triangle, you can add as many forces together as you want, um, but we draw them, so we start with our first force at the tail, and we draw it in place, and then we take our next force, 
and it begins where the last one finished. So if this is A, B is going to join. So from the very tip of A is where the tail of B starts. We draw it. And then we can actually get the addition of those two forces when we start at our first tail and we go all the way to our final tip. So we can draw a new force from the tail of A to the tip of B. Let's call that C. So our A plus our B will equal our new force C. And we can do that with as many forces as we want. And when we add them together like this, um, this is called the C there, the, the force that is the result of adding those two forces together, is called the resultant. My mouse, my thing is not really working. It's called the resultant, either way. So that's a new word that we need to know. So a resultant is like a summary force that shows different forces being added together. So we can add multiple forces together and the summary of all those forces going from the tail of the very first force to the tip of the very last force is called the resultant.